How accurate was Monster the Jeffrey Dahmer story? The 10-part Netflix series that's quite literally taken over the platform has been criticized for a number of reasons, but it's also been praised for the nature of the way that the show has been produced. It's been controversial in the sense that it doesn't hold back with what we see and how the events were told, but it certainly delivers in the style of show that it tried to be. However, the accuracy of the show is something that has been questioned. So with that, I thought I'd take a look at some of the poignant moments in the TV show to see how accurate they were. So let's get into it. Here is How Accurate Was Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers on the TV show. The Jeffrey Dahmer Trial and Family Statements During the show, we didn't spend that much time during the trial or witness that much of what was going on during it. In Episode 8, it centered around Jeffrey being on trial, but more about the family of the victims as they expressed how they felt. One thing that was left out was Tracy taking the stand and speaking against Jeff about the night that he was caught which ultimately stopped Jeff from continuing his evil acts. However, the family statements that we saw unfolding in the Netflix show were true to what was actually spoken during the real trial that took place. Rita Isabel's speech was essentially word for word, and the outburst of emotions that played out were mirrored in the show as it was in real life. Shirley Hughes, Tony's mother, closing off with two fingers and one thumb, meaning I love you in sign language, was also spoken in the statement in real life. That, along with Donald Bradhoft's statement and Dorothy Strotter's, was also the same as what was spoken, showing that they did stay true to what occurred in real life which was something that made that moment one of the most pure, real, and saddening in the entirety of the show, as these were true words that were actually spoken from the heart. This was one reason as to why the show received some criticism, as the depictions of the family members in the show, especially in this heartbreaking, emotional scene, was a moment that really resembled how it unfolded, and meant that the family members had to relive a traumatic time in their life, down to the words spoken, the outfits worn, and the realistic nature of it, it was something that was very accurate when compared to the real-life footage. One thing that was inaccurate about this scene playing out was that the family of Conrack, the youngest victim of Jeffrey Dahmer, wasn't in attendance, but they were included on screen, present there, during the 10-part series. The police officers being reinstated and then winning an award. Both officers that were dismissed for returning Conrack to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment after he escaped were both suspended in real life like we saw in the show. And just as the show depicted, they were both reinstated in their roles in 1994. However, one element of the show that wasn't true was the both of them winning the award that was titled Officer of the Year. That was made up for the purpose of the TV show, but I think that may have been done as one of the officers, John Balkazak, eventually went on to become president of the Milwaukee Police Officers Union. So it showed a form of rewarding them, but in a slightly different way. Jeffrey phoning a victim's family member. In the 10-part series, we witnessed an all-too-haunting moment where we heard Jeffrey call the family of one of his victims and tell them to stop looking for them, and that he was gone. It's been said that this was something that Jeffrey Dahmer did do in real life, which added to the haunting nature of the inclusion. In terms of other things that occurred in the show, such as Jeffrey stealing the mannequin from a store and keeping it at his house, that was true. Along with the working at a blood bank and consuming the blood, that was also true, although it wasn't the same as how it was executed in the TV show. Dharma also getting thrown out of the state fair due to exposing himself was also something that was true as well. But some of the moments that held real impact in the show, such as the police returning the 14-year-old boy Conrack to Jeffrey Dharma's apartment after he'd escaped, and the making homophobic remarks once they were in the car was all too true. Along with Glenda's persistent nature of phoning the police due to the odour that was coming from his apartment, and the noises that she was hearing did actually occur, and it just fell on ears that weren't prepared to listen or do anything about it. In fact, the many people that were complaining to the building manager was something that did also occur in real life too, just like it did in the show. It seems as though the creators of the show wanted to keep this as accurate as possible to what occurred in real life, and as haunting as that may be, it does feel like the most respectable way to do it. However, I feel the controversy has arisen due to the fact that the family members of the victims were not notified of anything that would be happening, so having to relive this all again would most likely have been difficult. Jeffrey Dahmer was sentenced to 900 years in prison, like we saw in the show, and he was murdered by Christopher Scarver, as was depicted. However, in the show, it was made to look like the guards were involved in turning a blind eye to what was happening. 
However, in real life, it wasn't seen to have happened like that, and no guard was said to be involved. By staying close to the actual truth, and by allowing us to not see the show from Dharma's perspective, but that of a fly on the wall in what occurred, it allowed us to see Dharma for the monster that he truly was, and sympathise with the family and the victims that were on screen. It was a haunting, saddening, and emotional watch, and the all-too-real nature of it was something that I think added a layer to it, because dramatisation wasn't needed. So, there you have it. How accurate was Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story? If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. Did you make it to the end of this show? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.